This is the coolest thing I've ever made. showcasing the new and improved, the sleek and the sexy, the feature-packed Mark III wings and hopefully the last. I've been working on this project for over a year and it has taken so much time and energy only to come crashing down every single time. But like my darling Lola, I've grown to become stubborn and have continued pushing until hopefully I get it to fly like a dream. Now obviously I was tucked away in a cave in the middle of nowhere for three days glued to my computer working on the design. But when it was all said and done, it was so worth it, even if it all came crashing down. Once I got all the intricate details ironed out on CAD, I exported all the sketches and arranged everything on Inkscape with the proper color coding so that the Omtech CO2 laser can cut it all up with laser precision. Let's cut some wood. The laser was able to cut the basswood and the balsa wood like butter. This is the cheapest laser you can find on Amazon and I got this a few years ago primarily to cut and engrave sheets of acrylic for a project I'll be showcasing in the near future as soon as this plane decides to fly. So don't hold your breath. Once everything was cut, I laid out all the ribs in order and slid them on the carbon fiber tubes that will be the main spars supporting the structure. When I got them all spaced out properly, I epoxied all the contact points using JB Weld 5 minute epoxy. I had to mix like five batches to do the entire wing, so I actually went out and looked for an epoxy that had a bit more working time. I found a 30 minute epoxy from Bob Smith Industries thinking that I'd have so much more time only to find out I only got an extra three or four minutes. But once I asked Chad Gippity what I could do to increase the working time, I got it up to about 15 minutes, which actually helped out a lot. I only had to do like two or three batches. While the epoxy was setting, I carefully measured all the trading edges once and cut them all twice. Sanded the edges down to a chamfer and began gluing the balsa wood stringers along with the trading edges. It was so satisfying pushing the wood into the perfectly sized slots. That's what she said! <laughs> Repeated this a couple more times and voila! Did the same for the control surfaces, a tad more sanding and they were pretty much ready for the monocoat covering. But before I got to that, I had to install the wiring. With the help of some DuPont connectors and crimpers, I made a custom wiring harness that all led to an 18 pin connection point, epoxied at the root of the wing. I was really unhappy checking the wires while trying to hold the wing in place and making sure I connect them the right way around and to the right extension, so I just made the process seamless. Now, I know what you're thinking, why on earth do I need 18 pins? The short answer is, I'm afraid of commitment. But remember back in my first video, I mentioned we might be strapping some cool explodey whoosh thingies on here? Well, I'm tired of using tape and wanted a solid and professional looking attachment point. So I added two cargo bays on each wing where I can attach whatever it is I come up with and have control via six of the pins. Another six are for aileron and flap control and another six run to the tip of the wing for lights and maybe another one of those pyrotechnic devices. For now, I have just finally outfitted the tips with a simple winglet and a cool nav strobe light sequence that I was able to program on an Arduino Nano with the help of good old Chat Jippity. Now the wings attach to the fuselage with the help of this little clip that very satisfyingly snaps into the opening, keeping the wing and contact pins secured. The carbon fiber tubes, thankfully, each fit into each other and that's what I use to be able to get a smooth assembly and disassembly process. So now we iron on the monocoat covering and it's ready to fly. Before we fly though, I had to figure out the issue of the landing gear. It has been taking a beating and I can't seem to design a reliable setup. So this time around, I've added an additional cross bracing for the main struts and a proper spring steel axle with new larger and heavier rubber tires. Although I think we'll do the maiden with the smaller foam tires just to give us the lowest takeoff weight possible. For the nose gear, I found a proper heavy duty kit from my local hobby shop and there's no way this thing is going to break. Just had to design a new mount, slide it on in and it was ready to go. Now, before we go to the field, I must say, the fact that I have been able to so heavily modify this aircraft without changing the original two carbon fiber rods 
or dimensions or the motor or really anything inside the fuselage really highlights the goal and success I've had with this design. Although I haven't had much success in getting it to fly for more than one day, it has been successful in the sense that all I've had to do is come home, print it out again, or bend it straight. Hopefully, after today, I won't have to laser cut anything. That's enough of me rambling though. Let's load it up and let's make it fly.